This is the Australian Fishing Championships. The road to Timbra. 11 of Australia's elite Brim, Bass and Barramundi anglers have been assembled to form four powerhouse teams. Each team has been equipped with the latest high-performance tournament angling craft matched with the most powerful engine and the latest innovations in fishing tackle. We've chosen six of the most challenging locations on the eastern seaboard to test the expertise of our pros. Foster, the oyster capital of Australia. The unspoiled waterways of Nambucca Heads. Majestic Mondurin Dam, just north of Bundaberg. An old AFC favourite, picturesque Kania Dam. And Awunga Dam, home to some of the biggest barramundi in Australia. Our final destination and the location where our champions will be crowned is the mighty Timbra Dam. Here, warm, tranquil waters provide an ideal environment for huge barramundi in excess of a metre. It's not about luck, it's not about chance, it's about skill, knowledge and the sheer determination to become this year's Australian Fishing Champions. I'm Steve Starling and welcome to the lovely Nambucca River on the banana coast of northern New South Wales for round two of the Australian Fishing Championships, the road to Timbra. I'm here with MotoGP legend Daryl Beattie. Daryl, our first round down at Foster would have to go down as one of the toughest ever. Oh yes, Stalin. and it wasn't just the weather that was unkind, it was those big brim that Foster is so renowned for. They were elusive all day, and wasn't it great to see our pros having to travel all the way up to those weed beds just to find five healthy fish for the weigh-in? If we look at the championship leaderboard after round one, we see Team Berkeley's Scott Towner at the top with 11 championship points. 10 points for the win and an extra point for equal big fish. In second place, our rookie angler Steve Duff from Team Club Marine. A great performance from him in his first ever AFC event. Just one point adrift in third place is Team Mercury's Darren Borg. Coming last is former AFC champion Tim the Brim Morgan with only three points. A good performance at Nambucca is imperative if Tim is to avoid relegation. But the win belonged to Team Berkeley's Scott Towner. Here's Adam Reuter with an in-depth look at how Scott tamed those foster brim. Thanks, Starlo. Look, the fishing was tough, but Scotty responded well to the challenge with an early change of tactics to leave his beloved racks and fish the less fished, shallow, weedy bays. This decision to move was critical and shows just how important it is to adapt your fishing style to the actual competition conditions. He could have stayed in the leases and struggled for a couple more fish, but his gut instinct told him to change his game plan, a risky move that paid off. He used a Berkeley Gulp Alive 3-inch minnow in the racks and a shallow diving chubby jackal on the flats. This combination of lure choice and the tactical changes paid off to the tune of his first ever AFC win and confirmed his status as the number one brim angler in the country. Now I had a chat with Scotty after each pre-fish. He caught a staggering 50 fish, so he could be our favourite here today. But there are three other anglers competing, so let's hear how they all plan to tackle the mighty Nambucca River. Oh yeah. Yesterday's pre-fish on the Nambucca River here was the second day I've ever fished it. It's a beautiful river, there's lots of different structure, lots of fish here. The secret's going to be to find those big ones. My pre-fish yesterday was an absolute disaster. I did not find any good fish. All the places I'd found when I was here practicing a few weeks ago were holding good fish and yesterday I just couldn't find any of them. Today I'll start off in the racks but then I'll move out up into a, um, a bit of a flat that I found. I was scanning past with the hummingbird side scan. I know there's two big logs coming down underwater off the flat. First cast wound it out and banged 31 centimetre fish, so I'll be trying that again today. I'm actually going to throw around the big floating leases. I'll throw small soft plastics. I'll be changing all day because I caught fish on all different plastics yesterday. And when I go and fish the hard leases, I'll actually throw a small hard body lure. And my tactics today are going to be to throw the whole box at them as yesterday's pre-fish was so bad. Oh, it's a dream come true to be in second place coming into this event. However, I've got Tim and Dizzy behind me and I'm going to have to be right on the game 
to stay in second place. I'm here above the beautiful Nambucca River. The time is almost here. It's a few minutes away from 7 o'clock. The guys are almost ready to go. Steve Starling is at the start line speaking to Tim the Brim Morgan. Well, Timmy, five seasons on the AFC and with uh, the threat of relegation hanging over you, it's all come down to this morning on the Nambucca River. How do you feel? It's probably the biggest event I've done in the five years, Starlo, but no nerves at all. Just going to go out there, catch the five biggest brim I can and uh, hopefully get up the top at the end of the day. There he is, Timmy Morgan, the man of ice. Talk about calm under pressure. And we'll cross now to Matty Campbell and Steve Morgan to call all the action. Thanks very much, Starlo. Round two of AFC coming to you from Nam Buckerheads, the final for our Brim Pros. Steve Morgan, welcome to you. And given that most of our pros yesterday had a very successful pre-fish, expectations will be very high. Three of these four pros absolutely smashed them in the pre-fish. This is a new arena. They think the fish are fresh. They're thinking about getting their five fish very early and then upgrading. All right, here we go. AFC number two here in Nambucca River. Let's hope we can get another decent result here today and get Team Club Marine right up that scoreboard. Final preparations being put into place. Amazingly, Tim Morgan under pressure to retain his spot in this competition. Using his GPS, getting set for a crucial day's angling, as are all our pros. The Ford Ranger clock counts down the pressure seconds to 7am. The siren has sounded and we are underway. Here we go. Time to get it on. Looks like all the boys are heading upstream. I think I'm going to change my mind and go downstream. Interesting tactic by Dizzy, gambling at all at this event. Let's check the rules as Dizzy moves off. Our pros will be fishing for the next seven hours using flies and lures only. They're looking for a bag of five legal brim. The heaviest bag will take the maximum ten points. As our pros take off, let's check today's weather. We have a slight chance of rain, however, it'll be mostly fine with winds increasing later. We're heading for a top temperature of 21 degrees, high tide in about 90 minutes' time, low tide after our pros finish. And Steve, what about today's species? Our target species is the yellowfin brim found from northern Queensland all the way down the east coast into eastern Victoria. The ABT record is a massive 1.99 kilo fish that Chris Wright caught at Foster. 1.2 kilos is the mark in AFC, caught by Darren Borg. Well, Darren Dizzy Borg of Team Mercury has gone in completely the opposite direction to the rest of the field. He's only come about 400 metres from the start line and he's fishing these floating racks. Any bites yet, Diz? Uh, one little tap just before, that was about all I've got. Did you expect a bit better start than that? Well, we caught lots of fish yesterday, but they're all small, so I thought the small ones would be out first up this morning, but this might be a good sign. They're not biting the small ones. We might be able to get a few big ones today if we're lucky. <laughs> Let's cross to Adam Reuter in the chopper and find out what the other guys are up to. Thanks, Starlo, mate. I'm further upstream at the moment, and as I predicted, all of our pros are fishing the racks. There's Scotty Towner now, fishing smart in the shade of those big gum trees. Great tactical move. I think everyone found fish on the... Uh on the leases yesterday and there isn't that many of them so maybe hopefully the guys did fish smart and didn't sort of sting too many i moved along and fished to quite a few of them i left a few a fair few alone but everyone i went to i basically pulled fish off so i just thought that today we'd start off exactly the same but i just need a fish a fish to settle the nerves the hell? I did not lose any fish yesterday. A nervous start from Scott Towner from Team Berkeley. Here's Steve Duff from Team Club Marine. We've got a series of piles that run through where the old washboards used to run and then we've got the actual old washboards that are sitting up, up through here and the fish are sitting up tight on them, having a feed on all the barnacles and cockles and everything that's actually growing on them. Last event at Foster, Steve Duff lost his kicker fish in this heavy rack structure. This time he's upgraded his leader to 10 pound. Oh, there we go, there's one, we're on. It's only a little black. There we go. There's a start. There's a lot of these little fellas. You've just got to sift through them to get to the bigger ones. Coming up after the break, it looks like a tough day at the office on the Nambucca River. Can't win today. Welcome back to round two of AFC Outdoors, coming to you from fabulous Nambucca Heads. 
A picture-perfect place for our pros today, with plenty of options on the Nambucca River, as we see Scotty Towner from Team Berkeley moving upstream already to find position number two. From the air, Darren Dizzy Borg moving downstream. For more information on the arena, here's Steve Starling. Nambucca Heads is located in northern New South Wales, midway between Sydney and Brisbane. The subtropical climate makes it the ideal location for offshore, beach and estuary fishing. It's also the meeting point of four creeks and rivers that run into the Pacific Ocean, making it the perfect spot to catch brim, whiting and some sizeable flathead. Although the river runs only a cast away from the Pacific Highway, it has a reputation for producing large numbers of brim, and it's an ideal place to learn the art of catching brim on lures. Mangroves, fallen trees and rock walls line the banks of this pristine waterway, but it's the man-made structures where our pros are most likely to succeed. Bridge pylons, pontoons, boats and oyster leases offer the pros ample opportunities to land the bigger brim that they'll need to win this event. This is the AFC's very first visit to the beautiful Nambucca River in northern New South Wales and it's also our first serious encounter with floating oyster racks. Now these constructions, these rafts of drums and hanging cages are very different to the oyster racks that we're used to. They're real brim magnets but they're going to call for different techniques from our anglers and they're also going to require some pinpoint casting. And testing out his pinpoint casting on one of those floating racks is the Duff Man from Team Club Marine. Steve, what can you tell us about our Brim rookie? Steve Duff qualified for this Australian Fishing Championships by winning the Brim Grand Final in 2006 at Ballina. He's a sales rep for Strike Pro and Tika Tackle, and he's even got his own range of rods and lures he's been using so well in this tournament to date. And we're up close and personal with Steve Duff. And Stalo mentioned pinpoint accuracy, that is a classic example. An hour and a quarter into the competition, he's caught two smaller fish, but still searching for his first keeper. Oh, now he's on it again, and there we go. I'll grab the net for this one. And hopefully he's big enough. I think he'll be size. As we look at the Ford Ranger replay, Steve Duff, like all of our pros, casting in between the floating racks. The more times he can get his lure in that shade zone, the more bites he's going to get. Starlo, how different are these oyster racks here that we're used to seeing, like, for somewhere in Foster? Look, these floating racks, you do need to fish them a little bit differently. Often they're, they're moored up in quite deep water, and all the action is typically right up underneath the floats and underneath those hanging cages rather than down near the bottom. So the fish tend to be very close to the surface. A lot of times with your polarised sunglasses you can actually see fish in there, but it's really important to get the lure as close as you possibly can to the structure. Oh, and the fish will come out and have a go at it There's like one, one just did then. There. <laughs> yeah, there's some fish in here. It's also important to look at what the tide's doing. We've got a run out tide here. The fish tend to accumulate towards the up current end of the structure. If you think of it like a boat pushing into the current, they'll be up near the bow. I love fishing these things. Here's our first look at Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird. He has been the AFC's most successful brim pro. Tim Morgan is also the first AFC angler to qualify for both the brim and the bass sides of AFC. A lot of you may not know that Tim Morgan started tournament fishing, fishing for bass. So when you hear the words Tim the brim, it may not necessarily mean that's all he's good at catching. Yep, yep, good brim. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> almost hit the camera with it, got a bit excited, but he only had it, I wanted to just flick him straight in the boat, so that, that's a, definitely a legal fish there. No time to worry about the net, I was just too keen to get him in. Team Humminbird on the board, something Scotty Towner from Team Berkeley hasn't yet managed to do, still fishing some of those floating leases, Daryl Beattie is down with him. Scotty, how's it going? No, it's tough, Daryl, yesterday it was... Uh... Fish after fish, every sort of lease you pulled up to, you'd cast in, fish would just swarm the lure and you'd pull one out and move on to the next one. But today you throw in there and you see them and they all just scatter. So it's, it's tough. Starlow's been mentioning that the, the flow seems a little slow at the moment. It may pick up as it comes on. Yeah, I thought it would have been flowing well by now, but um, no, it's not. And the water actually looks a little bit dirtier than yesterday. Yesterday there was a really good greenish-grey sort of colour to the water and today it's just sort of a 
browny chocolatey colour, but um, it might pick up a bit better later on. They say Nambaka's tough. It is tough. Yeah, it wasn't yesterday. I wish the comp was yesterday. I would have uh, cleaned up, I think. But yeah, today it's changed around totally. Go get them. Thank you. Down at the opposite end of the arena, the water is clearer and it's flowing, and that's where we find Darren Borg. Just want that big brim to come along and grab it at the moment. That's what we need. There we go. That's a fish. Oh, he's gone. And he's back on. Lucky break there for Dizzy. Often these brim down near the mouths of the rivers hang in big schools. That fish he's hooked, it's fallen out of his mouth and another one in the school has grabbed onto it. Dizzy is on for what might be his first legal fish. <sighs> Can't win today. Don't come in for a couple, mate. I think that'd be a good idea. I'm not getting any fish at the moment. Finally catch a decent fish. That was a pretty good fish. I don't know if it was a brim or not, but took one big lunge there right at the end and just popped me line. Time for another break on AFC Outdoors when we return. The brim and the pros get moving. Welcome back to round two of the Australian Fishing Championships from Nambucca Heads in northern New South Wales. Very serene and peaceful. Not much feeding being done by our feathered friends and not many brim being caught by our pros at the moment. Steve, when things are quiet, these boats enable them, though, to really get on the move. And if it was an ABT event and I saw this many boats moving up and down the river, I'd be thinking the fishing is pretty tough. There's stuff gone past. He's only got one as well, so it makes me feel a bit better, but I want to get five. Well, these boats are travelling at speed, and a man who knows all about that is Daryl Beattie. He went for a ride with Dizzy Borg. I guess, Dizzy, a lot of people look at these boats and they think, oh, wow, it just looks like a high-performance ski boat and not a fishing boat. That's right, there's a lot of electronics on board, we've got a lot of gear, we've got live wells, we've got lots of batteries to run everything. And people don't realise how much weight's in some of these boats on the water. A lot of these boats are well over a tonne on the water, which means we need a bit of power on the back to get them up and going. You run the Mercury outboard power plant and it's fantastic. There's long hours between servicing with these engines and it's quick from the boat ramp to your fishing grounds and more time with the lure in the water. Yeah, these modern motors, they don't let you down like the old two-strokes used to be when we were kids. They are quite good nowadays. You just put them in, go, and then you know, every so often take them in for a service. The Humminbird's fantastic technology now as well. You get a, a 3D image of the bottom of the, the seabed, and it also can do it in colour as well. I can't fish without a sounder. I, I religiously need to know what's going on underneath me. And with these new hummingbirds and with their side vision, you can even see what's going on a couple of hundred feet away to the side of the boat. In the racks around here, it's amazing how you guys use these, the motor guide electric engines in the tight areas and the wind's blowing. With that, with this package, you've got a pretty awesome fishing vessel. Yeah, those electric motors, they allow us to go to places that you wouldn't normally get into, hold the boat steady, make a good cast. In actual fact, it's the electric motor that makes us look so good when we're casting, because without it, you would never get in there. But Dizzy, there's never a bad day in the water, so this has been great. Let's go. It's just a bit quick for us. Back to Tim Morgan, who incredibly, since we saw him last, has caught 11 non-legal fish. Yep, there's a fish. So, oh, with any luck, it'll be legal, that fella, so... Put him on the ruler. If I was a betting man, I'd say 24 and a half. It will need to measure 25 centimetres to the fork of the tail. 24 and a half. I won't. <laughs> so I got one 24 and a half this morning, then I got a big one, so hopefully we can do it again now. Tim is still upbeat about his prospects, but unfortunately the fish are still too small. 
and Starlow, we've got an interesting situation here. We've got Scotty Towner and Darren Dizzy Borg just about fishing on top of each other. <laughs> Look, I think all their game plans have gone out the window in what is shaping up as the toughest ever brim round in AFC history. The guys are what we call running and gunning. They're doing a lot of travelling and a little bit of casting, trying to find that magic spot, and it is just not happening for them today. Only a couple of fish that we know of so far in live wells. I think we are going to see a really interesting last couple of hours of this particular round. I know how you felt yesterday, Dizzy. Hey, I got nothing. You're not the only one. Very interesting. Mr. Town is the same boat as me. He has got a fish and I haven't got a fish. And I'd say with the other boys coming down the front, they probably aren't doing very good either. Could be that day that if you can just have that one lucky cast, it might be good enough to do something with. He said he's got none either. I don't know if he's just pulling me leg so I'll take off, but um, sort of says to me, yeah, he's the master in this sort of stuff. There's clean, um, flowing water. If he can't catch him, no one can. So what I might do is head back up, just keep on hitting racks and racks and just hope for the best. Three and a half hours in, Steve, it's becoming a real mind game. The anglers have the decision at the moment. Do they keep fishing for the numbers and hoping for illegal fish, or do they look for that magic spot? What we've got through here, we've got a sandy bottom, and then we've got a weed bed system. And there's all these little patches of, of weed growing up. Between those patches of weed that drops down probably a foot, so the fish sit in on those edges and wait for some feed to come swimming past, and next thing, good night, Irene. It sounds like a plan, and it's into action because he is on. And Steve looks like he is definitely playing the numbers game, fishing these shallow, clear water flats at the mouth of the river. He is ploughing through these small fish, trying to find one to squeak over that limit. Another little one. I think that's all that's playing with us. That is the story of the day so far. Now, Dizzy Borg from Team Mercury, can you believe that after four hours, still absolutely zip in the live well? And Dizzy looks like he is playing all of his chips down the mouth of the river. It's a fish. I don't know how big it is, though. But it's a fish. Oh. Might be a legal brim, this one. Some real body language here from Dizzy. Steve, he's nervous, he appears excited. That's right, and let's put ourselves in Dizzy's shoes. Dizzy's talked to Scott Towner and Scott had zero out of five. He's seen the other two boats running up and down the river, struggling in his mind. Dizzy thinks this may be the only legal fish caught in the tournament to date. And as we've seen over the years on AFC, the most dangerous time to lose the fish is just before you land it in the net. Oh, we're gonna have to put him on the stick. It's gonna be a measurer. It will need to measure 25 centimetres to the fork of the tail. And that's different from when we're social fishing. When we're out on a Sunday catching our brim, they can be 25 centimetres to the tip of the tail and still be legal. We have higher standards for our tournament yeah. anglers, which means that they have to catch fish that are slightly over the normal legal size. There he is, about 25 and a quarter. So, we got one in the well, finally! Woohoo! Look out! At last for Team Mercury, Dizzy <coughs> Borg is on the board. Now back up the river, Steve Duff from Team Club Marine, he's searching for his second keeper. There we go, that's a keeper. Oh no! Bit of rod rage for you, but... Pulled the damn hooks. That's two fish today that have pulled hooks, so that's really going to hurt later, especially as tough as it is. Steve Duff knows exactly how much that is going to hurt because in a tough tournament like this, every single hookup counts. That's Scotty Towner on the move once again. Boy, is he covering some territory on the Nambucca River. But Steve Duff, not to be outdone, back in the same spot. There we go. Got me wrapped in here somewhere. As long as everything holds up, we'll be okay. Just turn his head, get him in the. There we go, number two. Number two. 
Ah, uh, that makes me feel a hell of a lot better. We'll take another break. When we return on AFC Outdoors, Dizzy gets busy and Towner is still on a downer. Welcome back to round two of AFC Outdoors from Nambucca Heads in northern New South Wales. The first time our pros have visited this fabulous arena, but unfortunately things haven't gone according to plan and they are ducking for cover at the moment. Let's recap what's happened so far. Plenty of fish being caught, unfortunately the wrong size, Steve. That's right, there's been 50 brim caught today and only four of those fish have made it to the legal size. So once again, a bit small, but just keep casting and going through them. Something happening here. Dizzy is on. Silver. It's the right colour. It's definitely the right colour. Just got to get him up and see if he's going to be big enough. There he goes. He's in the net. I reckon that's going to be fish number two. Now we'll have a little look here. He's got that stinger hook right down his gob. The bite's hardly biting on. I've just got a little stinger hook attached. I'm just putting it right in the tail. So as soon as they grab that tail, I've got the chance to feel them and set the hook straight away. Dizzy's making a bit of a charge, but Scotty Town is still having a bad day. Adam Reuter is with him. Scotty, uh, how's your day panning out, mate? Well, Adam, it's been really tough. I dropped a couple of fish straight up. Um, I think it's going to really hurt me because uh, yesterday we're out here and there was just there was fish everywhere. You cast to one of these floating leases, 10 or 20 fish would swarm on it and you'd pull one out every time. Today, you cast to them and they just scatter, they're gone. Very frustrating for Scotty Towner, especially since you can see these fish up and under the floating leases and feeding. Take it, please take it. Come on, take it. Oh, he's got it. Got it. Oh! Damn it! That was a good fish. I skipped it in and like yesterday he raced straight out and grabbed it. That's heartbreaking. That was a good fish. He was pushing 30 centimetres, that one. And for here, I think that that is a good fish. He is absolutely frustrated, Scotty Towner, but the man on the move is Dizzy Borg. And he is fishing down the bottom of the river still, fishing these seawalls and the man-made structure. There's a fish. Putting up a bit more of a fight than some of those other fish. He might go legal. Well, we'll put him on the stick. We'll soon find out. He'll go close. That's three in a row for Dizzy. Starlo caught up with him and Tim Morgan after yesterday's pre-fish. Dizzy, the whole pre-fishing thing's an interesting question. Uh, what's your approach to pre-fish? Do you like to catch some fish on pre-fish or do you sort of feel that every one you catch on pre-fish day is one you're not going to catch in the, in the comp? Yeah, I, I don't like to catch too many fish on pre-fish day. I don't mind getting a few, but I try not to fish too many in my spots. But I've learnt during the AFC that sometimes you actually have got to go into the spots that you think you're going to fish and actually give, a, give them a good go, because if you don't know if the fish are there, you could end up in uh, all sorts of trouble, a bit like Foster. I didn't go near any of my spots until the day and I really struggled on the day. So, Tim, for the first time ever, we've got one angler fishing bass and brim rounds. That's you. How does that feel? Oh, it's pretty good, Starlo. Uh, well, probably this year I've done a bit more bass fishing than brim fishing, so I'm really looking forward to get out there and mixing it up with the boys. Brim versus bass, which is the tougher fish? They can be as hard as each other to catch. I, I think bass can be a bit more temperamental with the weather conditions. Um, brim maybe more so with the tides and the areas that the fishing, but uh, definitely when they get a case of lockjaw, both can be really hard to catch. And Dizzy, you've just been uh, really going well on the ABT circuit. You're top money earner at the moment. You're second overall on all-time points. How does that feel? Yeah, it's been fantastic, Starlo. This has been the best year I've ever had. I've won about 24,000 bucks this year, so it's uh, certainly one of the best. All right, guys, well, thanks very much for sharing that with us and uh, good luck in this round. Thanks, thanks a lot, Starlo. Thanks, Steve. Back to the action. Now, Steve, we've got two pros fishing very close together. How often would we see this? In a normal ABT event with 50 boats on the water, it'll happen all the time. But because the Nambucca is so small, it's going to happen today with only four. 
It should be no secret to you that our AFC pros are gun casters, and here's a little tip to help you cast a nice lightweight threadline outfit like this a little bit more accurately. Now you'll need to get in your backyard and get a casting plug to get this to happen, but I'm sure if you employ this tactic, then you'll become as good a caster as they are, and this is how it goes. With your index finger, put it on the lip of the spool and open the bale up. The line will fall down onto your index finger, and then when you're ready to cast, rod back and forward and the line will slide underneath your finger and you can control exactly how much line comes off the spool throughout the cast. Back to Team Mercury now. Dizzy's in the middle of a purple patch here and he's even gathered an audience to see how he's going. There we go, there's one. Mm, I reckon he might be alright, this fish. Might be a lot bigger than I thought he was going to be. Hopefully we can get him in here. Actually, he looks pretty good. He does look good. Take my time, be patient. That's what it's all about. He's definitely a keeper. And is he doing very well in this clear water in the lower river? He's stuck to his guns all day here and it's starting to pay some real rewards. Oh, yeah, there we go. Have a look at that. It's a pretty big brim for what we've been catching today. Slowly getting there. That's what we want. One more like that. And there'll be high fires all around in this boat. He is on fire at the moment. Now Team Club Marine and Team Humminbird, they are going head to head on the washboards. How you going, Duff man? Mate, I'm struggling. What about yourself? <laughs> One. Jeez, maybe I'm not struggling. How are you going? I got two and I've dumped two. Ah, oh, you're kicking my butt. So you got two in the well? Yeah. Ah, uh, well done, mate. Tw oh. <laughs> 25 nothing and a 31, so. Oh, 31's a good fish. Yeah. I hear all the other boys are struggling anyway, mate. So. What about Scotty? Ah, uh, none. None? None at last call, so. Oh, does make me feel a little better, but <laughs> you blokes are too good. I don't know what's going to happen. That last half hour, oh, whack, 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 whack. <laughs> I'm going to be trying. <laughs> good luck, mate. You too. <laughs> Time for another break on AFC Outdoors. When we return, the fish come out to play late in the day. <laughs> oh, yes. Now to our overview map of our arena. And Steve, our GPS will show exactly where our pros have been, starting with the yellow, Team Humminbird. Team Humminbird have fished all the way from Maxville down to the mouth of the river, running and gunning their secret spots. Club Marine have done exactly the same thing. He's fished a further up ridge at Maxville, but he still has hit all of those floating leases up and down the river and a little bit in the mouth of Worrell Creek. Scotty Towner favours that middle section of river. You see him working back and forth and back and forth along those floating oyster leases that he loves to fish so well. In contrast, Darren Borg has stuck with his guns and he has only fished downstream of the start. The seawalls from Nambucca Heads around to Worrell Creek is where he's got his bag of four, ignoring the structure upstream. Now we'll zoom in on Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird and incredibly, we're now inside the last hour and he only has one fish in the live well. The former champ staring relegation directly in the face. There's one there. It's legal too. Go on and get in the net, get in the net. Oh yes. So that fish there will be legal. So we've just come, this is our first blue pontoon. Grab that nice little brim there. So let's try and get another couple. Steve Duff is on the move. He's got two in the live well. This is one last ditch attempt to make it number three. Duff heading back early. He might be have a full bag. And again, he might be just trying to find his last fish or something. They are the words of a man that won round one, but has now had all the confidence sapped out of him. This one might be a bit better. I don't know. Uh, oh, it'll be legal. Oh, please don't go under there. This is two pound line around oyster racks. I haven't had the net ready the whole time because <coughs> I haven't actually hooked anything. Oh, God. Come on, I 
think it's legal. It looked legal. Then again. Please don't get off. Please don't get off. Come on, mate. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. That little lure done it for me again, mate. Saved the day today. I honestly thought I was going back with the donor. With 16 minutes to go, <sighs> Team Berkeley finally on the board. Man, it's been a long day. A long day with not very many fish. It has been a long day, but Dizzy doesn't realise how well he's doing compared to his opponents. There we go, there's one. Got him out. Back that drag off because I know I rubbed him. I know I rubbed him on that rock. How's that? We got our five fish. A full bag for Team Mercury and more than likely maximum points. <sighs> Man, that's been the toughest day's fishing I've had in any comp for a long time. How's that? That's out and about a better performance than any other angler today by Team Mercury's Dizzy Borg. Now Scotty Town is on again with 10 minutes to go. This two pound around these things is just heart in the mouth stuff. Oh, he might be legal. Oh, thank you. I'd say he might be just legal. We'll get him on the measure. Give you a good little look at him in my hand while I get the measuring stick out. But yeah, I think he's gonna be legal. Oh, easy. He's 27 centimetres. So he's definitely a legal fish. Second for the day. If only I had got three earlier, like at Foster. Anyway, I think it's pretty much over. I might get one more cast in there. We'll get him away. A sense of relief for Scotty, and it may make a difference on the leaderboard. Oh, we only got a minute and a half to go, so to go back, so... Oh, well, exciting last hour anyway. A lot of hits, and uh, but just couldn't convert any more legal fish, so... We'll uh, do the minute run back to the start line and, and see how everyone's going. I know Duffy's beaten me, but uh, Scotty and Dizzy will be the, the two to worry about. Well, that's the day. We've only got two fish. One of them's a good one, one of them's just. I don't think it's going to be enough, but uh, I can't do any more than what we've done. So as our pros head for home, let's take a look at the results for today. Plenty of fish caught, but unfortunately not enough of legal size. A good performance by Team Berkeley inside the last 15 minutes saw them bag two keepers. Team Club Marine had a tough day, so too Team Humminbird. Team Mercury the best, 21 fish caught, five in the live world, but still no upgrades. When we return here on AFC Outdoors, controversy at the weigh-in. Welcome back to round two of the Australian Fishing Championships from Nambucca Heads in northern New South Wales on what has been a pretty tough day for our pros. Two of them have already hit the scales and our leader so far from Team Berkeley is Scott Towner, 120 grams ahead of Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird. And that means our former champ will be relegated. Now it's time for Team Club Marine and Steve Duff. Uh, Steve the Duff Man Duff from Club Marine, who uh, thought he had two fish, but unfortunately one was just a fraction too short and uh, got knocked back by the adjudicators. So he's come in with uh, just the one brim, but it is a rather nice brim, and I think it might uh, end up taking out big fish. Was that, was that one of your toughest days on the water? That was hard. That was hard. Yesterday I got a bag easy, and today that was just, it was hard. What do you think turned it round overnight? I don't know. I just don't know, because we, if, oh, you, no. if you go out and whack them, then you can send them down. We didn't go out and whack them yesterday. We just went and pulled a bag and got off the water. And it's it's only four competitors. It's not like an ABT field of 40 or 50. So uh, it's right. it's hard to explain. But 
it was a tough, tough day, and your fish weighs in at 0.61 of a kilo, so there it's we big go. brim. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. And last up, we have Darren Dizzyborg from Team Mercury. And uh, until a few minutes ago, Darren thought that he was the only one with a five fish bag from this Nambucca River round. But unfortunately, one of his fish measured just a fraction under the, uh, the length of 25 centimetres to the fork of the tail. So he's down to four. You just ground away out there today, didn't you? You had a shocker of a start. You didn't want to talk to anyone after an hour or two. What turned it around in the end? Uh, I think when I seen all the boys come from upriver back down the bottom, give me an indication they were all doing it tough. And then I thought, well, maybe if I just stick it out and just keep going, it might come good. Like that. that and getting upset a few times, a bit of rod rage helped a bit. OK, four lovely brim there. But the mark that you really want to beat is Scotty Towner's 950 gram bag. And you have easily done that with 1.59 kilos. <laughs> well done, mate. Right. And the Aloha Boats Big Fish did go to Steve Duff from Team Club Marine. Only 610 grams, but two points all the same. Thanks, mate. Thank you. So to the points for round two in one of the toughest days in AFC history. Team Mercury, Darren Borg picking up 10 points, ahead of Scott Towner from Team Berkeley, second with eight. Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird picked up six points, and Team Club Marine Steve Duff picking up five, which includes the two bonus points for the Big Fish of the Day. So to the championship leaderboard after our final brim round and Team Berkeley remains in top position with 19 points. Team Mercury has jumped from third to second position, now trailing by two. In third position, Team Club Marine on 13 points and disappointing for Team Humminbird and Tim Morgan, they trail on nine. Well, Daryl, what an incredibly hard round that was for our brim pros here at the Nambucca River in northern New South Wales. Starlo, I couldn't believe the difference from pre-fish day for our anglers to pinpoint those fish and the clarity and the debris in the water made it very, very difficult. And there were times where they were fishing side by side just to try and get their bag limit of five brim. And none of them actually ended up with their five fish limit. Dizzy Borg came closest and clinched the round with four lovely brim. But what a sad day it was for Tim the Brim Morgan, relegated from the AFC after five straight series as a brim angler. Just as well he also qualified as a bass angler this year and we get to see him strut his stuff in our first bass round next time up at Lake Monjuran in Queensland, part of our Road to Timbra. You won't want to miss it. And if you want to find out more about the AFC in the meantime, check out our website at fishnet.com.au. We'll catch you later. Here we go. Oh! Oh. <laughs> They've just got last, he's only got one as well. Wow, there really isn't ever a bad day in the water, Dizzy. <sighs> come in for a couple, mate. I don't know if he's just pulling my leg, so I'll take off. Oh, no! Wow, bit of rod rage for you, but pulled the damn hooks. <laughs>